For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. Hello and welcome to Strat News Global. On 1st January 2023, it would be three years since India appointed its first Chief of Defence Staff to lead the three armed forces into future battles. The role and the functioning of the Chief of Defence Staff was determined through a notification that the government had issued at that point in time and General Bipin Rawat was appointed. What has happened since then is the topic of this week's Ask Nitin. I am Nitin Gokhale. So three years ago when uh, the government notified the appointment of the CDS, it was very clear what it wanted the new incumbent at that post to do. So first let's recap what exactly was in the government's mind that time. According to the notification or uh, the press release issued by the Press Information Bureau um, on 3rd February 2020, which is almost a month after the CDS had taken over or a little more than a month after the CDS had taken over, uh, it had said the duties and functions of the Chief of Defence Staff includes the following that he will be the Secretary of the Department of uh, Military Affairs, which was also newly created. He was to act and he is to act as the principal military advisor to the uh, Raksha Mantri, that is the Defence Minister and the Tri-Services Matters uh, to the Cabinet Committee on Security. He would of course be the permanent chairman Chiefs of Staff Committee, uh, which is uh, uh, of, uh, made up of the three chiefs, service chiefs and himself. Then he was to also administer the uh, tri services in terms of promotions, postings and uh, the appointments that would be done. He was uh, of course uh, an automatic member of the Defence Acquisition Council headed by the Raksha Mantri. Also a military advisor to the Nuclear Command Authority. And his main task was to bring about jointness in operations, logistics, transport, training, support services, communication, repairs and maintenance for the three services. Quite a vast task if you ask me. And he was to ensure optimal utilization of the infrastructure and rationalize it, rationalize it through jointness among the services. So, I mean, there were other minor points uh, in that uh, press release. If you access it on the PIB website, it is very much there. But this is all put down on the paper. There are things beyond that that a Chief of Defence Staff has to do. And General Bipin Rawat, uh, who passed away uh, exactly a year ago, two days ago, we are speaking on the 10th of um, December. He uh, and 12 others, including his wife, were killed in that uh, tragic air crash, the helicopter crash near Wellington in Tamil Nadu when he was uh, going to the Defence Services Staff College for uh, delivering a lecture to the young uh, future leadership of the Indian military. Tragically, he left a lot of uh, tasks uh, undone or uh, unfinished and uh, it is now up to the new or the second uh, Chief of Defence Staff, uh, General Anil Chauhan, uh, who was appointed uh, by the government in October 2022. Uh, to head the Department of Military Affairs, act as its secretary and also take over the functions of the CDS as I elaborated in the beginning of this program. So what has happened in these three years since 2020? I think there are three or four issues uh, that were at the top of the mind uh, as far as uh, the uh, new CDS or that time new CDS General Bipin Rawat was concerned. And uh, they were in uh, no particular order, bring about uh, the mindset change amongst the military leadership at the highest level and then go down the ladder to the middle level and the lower level where each service thinks about the other two uh, and how to bring about jointness and integration. That has been lacking in the Indian military. Each service has been acting in a separate silo creating duplicacies, creating redundancies and creating uh, more expenditure for the military in terms of 
uh, equipment uh, acquisition and also creating logistics nodes uh, it became uh, unwieldy that had to change that was his first task the mindset change and that is the biggest task you can change structures on paper but if the mindset doesn't change then there is a problem the number two uh, task that he had assigned to himself i remember was to create uh, theaters or theater commands for uh, effective jointness among the three services which meant that uh, you needed to create uh, theaters depending on how the plan was where all the three services or at least two of them worked together operated together and created structures that would be applied to a war situation or a conflict situation when uh, required and that meant a huge change not just in the mindset but also in the way the services operate on the ground logistics wise uh, operationally uh, the way they store their weapons the way they employ their tactics and strategy all that needed a lot of discussion a lot of deliberation and brainstorming which uh, he was uh, trying to do uh, during his tenure and uh, the third and the most important part was to uh, see to it that uh, optimal use of the resources that were available to the three armed forces uh, was done now the budget uh, of the uh, military has not increased uh, substantially over the past decade or so it remains if you have to give broad figures at about uh, 1.5 uh, percent of the GDP if you just take out the pension from the uh, expenditure of the military services if you take the pension then it's about 2 percent of the GDP which in many people's view is not enough but the reality is India has many other tasks many other challenges to meet and therefore the military will always get uh, this kind of money and not more than this uh, for the foreseeable future so optimization of the budgets was uh, another priority now General Rawat, uh, because he was the first Chief of Defence Staff, had uh, many difficulties on hand. One was of course to shed his own uh, loyalty to the army uniform, uh, because uh, for 40 years he was the army officer, he had risen to become its uh, chief, the army chief, and then had stepped into the shoes of the first uh, CDS. So uh, to overcome uh, the, the inherent uh, soft corner for the army was perhaps his own uh, challenge which he did admirably but uh, sometimes uh, in his own enthusiasm in, in his own exuberance he also uh, overstated the case uh, for uh, the uh, the importance of the army for the indian military and uh, in fact in that infamous episode uh, said uh, in a television uh, interview or a television broadcast that uh, the air force is like a support arm of uh, the indian uh, army like just like the artillery or uh, the uh, army air defense which did not go down very well uh, with the air force i am understating that uh, uh, reality and it created huge ruckus in the within the military itself highest level uh, intervention had to be done to calm down temperatures had to calm, uh, so the intervention had to then make sure that the process of uh, integration or process of theaterization slowed down a bit uh, before it was uh, relooked at uh, by uh, many um, uh, senior people and then uh, as an outcome of uh, that uh, controversy a committee of the vice chiefs the number two is in every armed force every military uh, wing was uh, created or was appointed to look at uh, how it can be done and what is the way forward what are the timelines I in fact did a interview with uh, general uh, Lieutenant General Subrata Saha who was of uh, friend and a co-smate of uh, General Bipin Rawat on our sister channel Bharat Shakti. Uh, do watch that where he brings out uh, the challenges and the, uh, the way Bipin Rawat function. But uh, in my own view, uh, what he could achieve was uh, something similar uh, that uh, was expected of him. That is to get the three services to think uh, in one common way about logistics. Uh, about transportation, about uh, nodal hubs for uh, storing ammunition, for storing uh, clothing, uh, for storing essentials for the military. And uh, that became evident, uh, the advantage of uh, that kind of uh, integration or jointness that started coming in there. When India mobilized uh, in a very short time uh, in Ladakh, 
when uh, the Chinese uh, started uh, moving aggressively along the line of actual control. And the mobilization of the Indian Army, the Indian Air Force together uh, during those months of uh, May and June 2020 is a tribute to the changing mindset of the services where they are now thinking uh, in a common way about logistics to begin with. As they say, uh, amateurs discuss tactics and strategy, professionals talk about logistics. And I think if logistics can become integrated and uh, become uh, something that uh, the three services follow as a mantra, then uh, half the battle is perhaps won there in terms of integration and jointness. There are other issues, of course, that General Anil Chauhan, the second uh, Chief of Defence Staff, uh, is looking at. And uh, according to what I uh, gather from uh, discussions with uh, many people who are involved, who are watching from the sidelines, who are being consulted uh, informally by the top military leadership and the middle level leadership, I gather that uh, the three uh, service chiefs as well as uh, General Anil Chauhan have had uh, two or three uh, discussions, uh, informal, uh, also uh, in, um, in a very symbolic way. Uh, one of the first discussions happened at the National Defence Academy from where all these three service chiefs as well as uh, General Anil Chauhan began their uh, military career uh, in a way as cadets they joined 40-42 uh, years ago and passed out from there. So they went back to the NDA probably reliving their uh, boyhood uh, or their days there but also symbolically uh, discussing the way forward for jointness and integration there. And there it was decided uh, apparently in the next two, three meetings between these uh, top uh, leaders that they will first attempt to uh, create the theatres, first attempt to do the difficult part. Theatres, creation of theatres is the, is the most difficult part in this process of integration. Once that is done, they will go for uh, the other smaller objectives like uh, optimization, like uh, getting the uh, military ready for next generation warfare, getting the military uh, ready for uh, multi-domain operations as they call it. Uh, because uh, today's wars are not uh, linear, they are not uh, unidimensional, they are multidimensional. So therefore getting them ready, which multidimensional operations involved uh, getting your strategic communication right, information warfare right, cyber warfare uh, in a correct manner. All that will be done. So therefore, uh, raising the technology threshold of uh, not just the officers but also the men and women uh, in the uh, ranks so that uh, use of modern technology uh, is also uh, brought in uh, faster into the military because that's going to be the uh, next generation war and not what has been fought in the past. So uh, this was uh, discussed and I think it's a good approach. So, 2023 in many ways will be a breakthrough year for uh, the Indian military because all these ideas, all this uh, will flow from the theatreization concept being finalized and then starting to roll out maybe early 2024 or middle of 2024. So, therefore, uh, watch out uh, for 2023 uh, for uh, these uh, very seminal changes that will come into the Indian military. What are the tasks, if you ask me and my last point here, uh, what are the tasks that uh, the three services or the CDS and the DMA, the Department of Military Affairs, which is also another experiment. For the first time this has happened, that there was no Department of Military Affairs earlier. It works under the Ministry of Defence alright, but it is uh, supposed to be looking after the affairs of the military, which was uh, given earlier to the Department of Defence, which is headed by the Defence Secretary. So therefore, even that experiment uh, has to succeed. So in my view, four or five things that the CDS must ensure going forward in 2023 and 2024 and that is ensure that the capability development of the uh, military uh, proceeds uh, at a pace that is uh, designed to achieve the objective uh, within the next two or three years for the next war that is coming uh, or that may, that may come. Get the theatreization uh, formula right or theatreization process right. Uh, make sure that integration uh, of the three services at the HADR level, the Humanitarian Assistance, Disaster Relief and uh, the uh, out of area contingencies if required can uh, be the first uh, test bed for integration of uh, the three services. Uh, modernize uh, the military, Indian military, not just in terms of weaponry and platforms but also in terms of structures and attitude. 
that should be his task. Uh, make sure that technology and automation, use of technology and automation uh, becomes the byword uh, in the Indian military uh, in every rank. And finally, get the training uh, pattern or training, uh, training needs of the three services uh, in, a, in a manner that uh, optimizes all the uh, required facilities and all the available facilities uh, that are there with all the three services. I think it's a huge monumental Himalayan task for the CDS, but that's why uh, that man is there after 40 years of service uh, in the army or later whoever comes in there. They have to ensure that uh, they deliver because without integration, without jointness, future wars, next generation wars cannot be fought and won. Uh, the idea, the whole idea is to win the wars and win the wars with Indian solutions as my friend General Subrata Saha uh, mentioned in that interview that I, I actually uh, described to you uh, where make in India and uh, Atma Nirbharta also becomes the uh, bedrock of India's self-reliance and defence and uh, therefore the Indian military becomes capable and not dependent on outside uh, supplies and platforms and weapons that come from there. But there is a question asked by one of our viewers and I am sure there are other questions that have not come in. But this is an important question which I think I have covered uh, in, in brief in one of my remarks here. And this is asked by Sneha Kukreti. She says, um, it was an attempt to use Air Force assets as extended artillery and a supporting arm to achieve the theatre commander's objectives. Will it happen now with the new CDS in command or not? Well, as I said, I think uh, General Rawat said that in uh, over-enthusiasm in an exuberant manner. Uh, that was later clarified by him that he didn't mean to demean uh, the Air Force. Uh, the Air Force uh, brings in uh, disproportionate power and uh, synergy into operations that India needs to win. That was his view. but it somehow came out in a different manner. I don't think Air Force can ever be used as uh, artillery. But yes, India needs to think of uh, different approaches. It needs to have a rocket force. It needs to have uh, more integration of the assets of uh, all the three services. And of course, the Air Force uh, brings in the, the final punch uh, when, it is, when it comes to swift wars and short wars. But remember, Russia and Ukraine has uh, showed us Russia-Ukraine war has shown us really that wars are not predictable. When Azerbaijan-Armenia war happened, everybody said these are the uh, this is the trend for the future. The wars are going to end uh, swiftly. The use of technology in in terms of UAVs, armed uh, UAVs will be the mainstay of the wars uh, in the future. But the Russia-Ukraine war has turned that notion on its head, and now we don't know when this war war will end, if at all. And uh, how even today, boots on the ground, heavy artillery, uh, heavy weaponry is still relevant when it comes to uh, fighting kinetic wars. So India has to be prepared for both uh, unconventional, non-kinetic uh, means of war as well as conventional means of war. And therefore, I think uh, what General Rawat said in that remark is of no relevance anymore. Uh, God bless his soul and the others who uh, tragically perished in that uh, accident. But uh, the future is something different than what it was in the earlier times. That's all I have uh, this week. Do keep watching Strat News Global. And of course, you know where to reach us and uh, how to follow us on which social media handles. Your support is important, but also your involvement, your engagement with us is important. It is based on your request, your uh, uh, questions that we come up with topics to talk about in this program called Ask Nitin. But uh, do keep uh, sending your feedback and questions if you have any. For the time being, it's goodbye.